There we go. This is Firefighter Tiger, co-host of the Public Safety Future Responders Podcast. Back with my favorite co-host, Medic Dog. What is up, Medic Dog? Nothing much, Firefighter Tiger. How is everyone doing out there in the viewer world? We are doing all fine and dandy. By the way, folks, this is Monday, October 30th, uh, one day before Halloween, which is on Tuesday, October 31st. So we're going to have a nice, fun, relaxing uh, pre-Halloween episode going on. Um, I'm f- so, folks, hopefully you all enjoy. Um, we're going on th- on episode six, which I cannot believe we're already on our sixth episode of the podcast. I'm amazed with that. And so, folks, because of Halloween coming up tomorrow on Tuesday, October 31st, we are going to highlight some Halloween safety tips for those of you who are trick-or-treating. Please note the fact of when it comes to Halloween, please be safe. That is the number one thing that we always remind you. <laughs> um, so we're going to start off with a bit of top tips for Halloween safety. Uh, from the safekid.org website. Um, First off is when you are walking, make sure you either carry a glow stick or flashlight or use reflective tapes or stickers on costumes and bags or and wear white colors to help kids see and be seen by drivers um, as you're walking along and you're wearing Halloween costumes. Um, If if your kid is under the age of 12, Please go join them for trick or treating, or send somebody who is over eighteen with them, so they so they are safe, protected, and you know your kid ain't gonna disappear. Since Halloween usually is full of spookiness, and while some spooky tales are very interesting, um, attention drivers, uh, traffic advisory for you all. Um, in terms of Halloween, please, 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 please slow the down, slow it down, and be alert. Um. Yes, even though kids are excited on Halloween, and yes, they may be full of sugar and driving their parents nuts, um, they may dart into the street. So, drivers, please be careful when you are out driving on Halloween. Um, regardless of where you are, still, s- slow down. Really? Like, please be mindful. Uh, turn on headlights early in the day, like, as the sun is setting. Um, just as the sun is setting. That is your indicator to the fact that it is going to be night soon. And uh, do yourself a favor and turn your headlights on. Please don't drive without your headlights. It's dangerous. I don't get how people can drive without headlights. Um, anything you want to say to that, Maddie Dog? I just want to say, you know, I fully agree. Um, just make sure that um, you are driving safe. But also for all the trick-or-treaters, just make sure um, that everyone out there is, you know, being safe because you do not want to have anything bad happen on Halloween. Because Halloween is such a great time of the year. It is one of my favorite holidays. And it's awful when you hear stories and news about someone getting hurt on Halloween. Or possibly getting killed. And we just don't want that. So just please be safe out there. That is certainly true to the fact of it. So as trick-or-treaters, um, folks, if you're trick-or-treating, do us all a favor. You see the white. You see the white uh, lines at the intersection. Use them. They're called crosswalks. Please use them. Don't be stupid. There's too many people that are playing stupid cards lately, and it's not pretty. Please just just use the crosswalk um, at intersections. Um, even if you don't see a marked crosswalk, if a road intersects with another road, that is considered also an intersection. So technically, not every intersection has crosswalks. But if the road intersects. It is an intersection, and yes, please cross there. Don't cross in the middle of the road. Um, even even if you gotta go by the house that you want to go to, still it's gonna it might take you a little bit longer, but it'll save you some time. Um, and then of course, like it is, a lot of parents do this, but we're just gonna remind you anyways. Um, in terms of selecting a Halloween costume, regardless of what it is, uh, make sure a it's the right size. For, for your kid or for yourself, depending on who's wearing the costume, to prevent you from tripping and falling. And if you're wearing, and if you have a debate on whether you want to wear face paint or mask, according to safekids.org, it's best to choose face paint over mask when possible because, and this is a big debate topic, 
um, because one reason is masks can limit children's vision. Um, that is actually true because I do, over this past weekend, I was wearing a a kind of a basically a fursuit head, which is considered a mask over my head. And I had somebody do the vision test, which put, which is basically put your hands up just outside of vision, outside the person's vision, and slowly move in until the person that you're doing the test to tells you to stop so you can see it uh, to mark your vision. Um, it's not pretty. A lot of vision kind of shrinks to like almost binocular size. Um, I know if you're a furry out there, um, it's it's almost binocular style. Um, so, yeah, so... Pay, pay also close attention for that. Um, if you are wearing a mask, make sure you have somebody with you to help you um, so you don't fall, even if you're wearing the right size co um, costume. And, yeah, pretty much also be safe and, and be seen on Halloween. Um, Another thing I just want to point out is um, always look both ways before you cross the street. Yep. Because look, left, look right, look left, look right, or right to left. Because you could look one way and say, oh, there's no car coming. But look the other way, like, oh, there's a car coming. And then, you know, just anything can happen. So always look both ways before you cross the street. Sorry, folks, for my phone going off. Um, as that is a very important safety mm -hmm. tip for Halloween. We are all about safety here on this podcast and we just want everyone to be safe out there this Halloween season. Right. And to go on about it a bit further, looking at the infograph from safekids.org, um unfortunately there are some statistics that are sad, but please consider these as also a reminder so you yourself don't end up being numbers. Um in terms of statistics Twice as many kids are killed while walking on Halloween than any other day of the year. Um, hence why their motto is be safe, be seen. Um, if you can be seen, then you are being safe. Uh, wear reflective tape or use glow sticks or carry a flashlight so drivers can see you. Drivers, put on your headlights. Don't drive without your headlights. Um, that is the biggest problem that I have been seeing. And really, like it is, if you are driving without your headlights... A lot of states do have regulations in play. That fact of if you are driving without your headlights, you are a dangerous obstacle to other people around you. And the police departments will come for you. Um, in terms of Halloween, you'd rather not be seeing the blue, but seeing the clear light. Um, meaning the fact of if you see the clear light, you made it home safely. If you see blue lights, you didn't make it home safely. Sorry. that That's the easiest point I can make it there. Um... In terms of walk, walking safely, um, cross at corners using traffic signals and crosswalks. Um, like we already were talking about with um, crossing, look left, then right, then left again. Um, use sidewalks um, and watch for cars either turning at intersections or backing up. Um, and if you're backing up, please use your backup signals so people can tell that you are backing up. Um, a lot of cars have them, so please use them. <laughs> um, and for drivers, for driving safely, uh, watch out for kids crossing mid-block because kids apparently will run across the middle of the road even though they're supposed to be going to the intersections. Um, slow down and be especially alert. Um, look for kids who might be trying to cross mid-block, meaning halfway between intersections. Um, and, of course, like it is, you know that little brick that you have sitting next to you, either in your lap or in your pocket or next to you? Please be smart. Don't use them. Don't use them when you're driving. I don't get how many people can say that so many times. Uh, we even have representatives here in the state of Connecticut who will say, uh, use your phone, you get a ticket. So keep your eyes off your phone and on the road so you don't be stupid. Um, yes, I know I'm calling drivers stupid, but that's because a lot of drivers are really stupid. Um, so keep your phones down and you're not going to get distracted. If you're going to send that message, before you send that message or you even pick up your phone, here's some advice. Pull it to the side of the road. Send your message and then put your phone down and go back to driving. Don't drive going, ooh, I'm going to send a text message like an idiot and not pay attention to the road. Um, so... 
But yeah, um, so in terms of Halloween, sorry for my little Halloween rant, but that's just how I'm putting, highlighting the most important safety. But really, overall, the whole thing is is be safe, be seen on Halloween. Um, yes, I know most people wouldn't want to put reflective tape on their costumes, but even if you don't want to put reflective tape, um, you still got either having glow sticks with you or having flashlights um, could be your best option. Um, I know highly flashlights work as very work very well because they're bright. Just remember to make sure that you have batteries in them and make sure your flashlights are actually working or go buy yourself a new one. Um, in terms of glow sticks, um, another safety tip I want to point out in terms of glow sticks, once you crack them, they will work. But take my advice, and I think Medic Dog will back me up on this, the effect of... Only crack them so you can get the light to be seen. Don't go making them so they go 100% break in half because the chemicals that are actually in there are only meant for that. They're not meant to get on your skin because they are chemicals. And if you get them on you, it is very hard to get them off. Um... So if you got if you get um, glow stick residue on your hands or your arms, please read the manufacturing safety guides in terms of how to clean it. Don't be stupid and try to think, oh, I can clean this off with this, and find out the fact that it sent you to the hospital. Um, so please be also safe around glow sticks. Um, only crack them so you get the light. Don't go bending them to the point where they break in half, because then you will get that out. And on you, and it is very, very bad luck. I will say that. Um, so, Mag Doug, do you have anything else you want to highlight? Um, I just want to say, you know, like, have fun out there, you know, this Halloween season. You know, be safe. You know, be smart. Make good choices. Make good decisions. You know, like, if you're going to be a villain as part of your costume, please do not take your character to the extreme point where the cops are being called on you. Um, but also just, you know, have fun as it only comes once a year, but please be safe, be smart, make good decisions, make good choices and just be safe. Right. And I want to go back to the fact that when you said about taking it to the extreme, um, folks, here's another piece of advice. Um, to the fact of when you're wearing a Halloween costume, and I will actually paraphrase from an email. Um, to the fact, in terms of how, in terms of Halloween, um, I think it is best said by a good person in terms of. Um, do you have anything else you want to say, Mag Doc? Um, you know, I just want to say, you know, just as much as it as fun as it is to portray and become your character um you know just also please try and be yourself because you know yourself is a really good part of you um also you know there's some really good halloween mm -hmm. movies you could watch as part of your parties i'm going to give a recommendation right now goosebumps to haunted halloween is a Really fun Halloween movie to watch. Another another one, folks, is um, also Beetlejuice. That's also another one that I will be actually, I am actually would also highly recommend because I will also be watch. I will be actually watching that actually on Halloween. But going back to what I was actually going to say, I'm sorry for the delay, folks. Um, I had to look up the section. Um, in terms of going back to what Mad Dog was saying about taking to the extreme. Another piece of advice I have is, um, as paraphrased by an email that was sent, um, in terms of cultural appropriation, um, cultural appropriation occurs when elements of a culture or cultural identity, such as imagery, religion, clothing, materials, or social behaviors are used in a way that were never originally intended. Um, when somebody adopts aspects of a culture that is not their own, regardless of the intent, these and similar acts may be viewed as disrespectful. Um, basically, in terms of what I just bullet noted, the fact of um, please also be smart and also take into the consideration in terms of choosing your Halloween costume where it's not affecting people's religion or disability. Um, if someone's, if one example that was given is um, 
would be dressing up as a person with a disability you do not have or experience. Um, another example would be wearing cultural or religious headpieces to accessorize a costume rather than their intended use. Um, additionally, a face painting, black face, yellow face, or brown face can also be disrespectful. Um, so take that also into consideration when you're when you're looking at Halloween costumes because you yes, Halloween is meant to be spooky and go out for trick or treating, but also take into consideration on what you wear could may could possibly lead to being disrespectful to others. So keep that in mind also. Um, I don't think anybody, including neither myself nor Meg Dog, would upset any any religion or disability because Halloween's meant to have fun, not the time to go get in trouble. Um, in that, and I am also going to point out one other thing, and I think Mad Dog will agree with me on this. Um, in terms of Halloween night, <clears throat> if you got rolls of toilet paper, please, 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 please. Don't be stupid and TP somebody's house or a car or a tree or anything else. If you're going to TP something, TP your own tree or TP your own car or TP your own house. Don't go doing it to somebody else. Like, I understand, yes, it is a Halloween night and people are supposed to go have fun and be that. But please be don't be stupid in terms of it. Like, I know we're trying to sound, we're trying to sound like like the grown-ups in the room of saying, no, don't you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this. But it's for your safety, number one, for your safety, their, your family's safety, your kids' safety, and in terms of looking at it from the public safety view, safety in general is the number one safety. And if you're going to be stupid, well, they, you see that blue, blue mobile down there? They're going to come for you, and it's not going to be pretty. So, I agree with that 100%, but also, if you have eggs or paintballs, also, please... Do not do anything stupid with them as well. Right, please. If you're going to use eggs, leave them in your refrigerator or cook them. Yeah. Don't egg throw people <laughs> because it's not pretty. If you're going to egg throw somebody, ask, a, ask one of your relatives if they could, if you could throw eggs at them Don't go, or your friends. Don't go doing it to somebody else without permission. Um, so in terms of that, I think we have covered enough Halloween safety tips and advice. Um, any other tips or advice you want to give um, so we don't beat a what is known as a dead horse? Um, no, just, you know, again, just have fun, be smart, be safe, and make good decisions. Right. And now, folks, since we are done with that, here's a little extra that we're saving. Since it is, is the day before Halloween, we're going to end this podcast episode what a nice Halloween tale that I have found. Uh, link will be in the description for that. So, folks, please enjoy this little bit of Halloween tale. Um, so, for those of you who may not know the McElwhite, um, pretty much it's a North Carolina Railroad ghost story um, that transpires um, that transpired in the years immediately following the Civil War, and that. So, folks, sit back and enjoy this nice spooky tale to end our podcast episode. Um, the Macro Light, an audio ghost story, um, which you can listen to the audio in the link in the description. Um, in the years immediately following the Civil War, the railroad was king. And if the railroad was king, its prince was the conductor. The engineer might have gone to sit up front, blow the whistle, and drive the train, but he couldn't move that train one inch until the conductor told him to. Joe Baldwin had always wanted to be a conductor. One day, he finally realized his lifelong dream when he was hired to be a conductor on the Wilmington and Manchester line. The WM stretched from the coastal town of Wilmington, North Carolina, which I'm sorry I butchered that, westward to Columbia, South Carolina, then down to Charleston, North Carolina, a town that Joe loved, never tired of visiting. The beautiful homes, the water, and huge helpings of fried chicken and sweet potato pie that his friends cooked for him. It made his mouth water just thinking about it. Um, Joe would appear at work every morning, smartly turned out in his clean pressed black pants, starched white shirt, black glitter vest, and expertly tied bow tie. 
On top of his head was the conductor's hat, with a medallion on the front that glistened like gold in the sunlight and red conductor. He always carried his lantern with him, along with a ticket punch and, of course, his railroad watch. For it was that the watch that Joe made his train run on time. Joe took very good care of his trains. Several times during a run, Joe would walk from one end of the train to the other, checking everything he could think of. Like the wheels to see if foreign objects from the tracks were stuck up in them, or the boxcars to make sure they were properly locked. Um, he would make sure that the passengers had everything then the needed and that there was always enough oil for the lamps so they wouldn't burn out at night. One stormy night, as they were traveling through the swampy woods near Maco, North Carolina, a few miles west of Wellington, Joe was back in the caboose resting. He had just completed his rounds and wanted to take a short break before they reached South Carolina. Dreams of Charleston danced in his head as the clickety clack of the train wheels lulled him to sleep. Suddenly, the train started slowing down, and Joe instantly woke up in a flash. Joe immediately got worried, for he knew it wasn't time for a stop yet. He jumped up, ran to the front of the caboose, opened the door, and stepped out for the next coach. But there was no co next coach. Joe was horrified to see that the caboose he was riding in had somehow become uncoupled from the rest of the train. Somewhere in the distant darkness, the rest of his beloved train had left him behind. Joe knew he was in trouble because right behind his train, he knew that a fast freight would soon be approaching. Joe ran out onto the rear landing and peered through the rain and fog, trying desperately to spot the train. Before long, way off in the distance, he saw a pinpoint of light, and he knew it had to be the freight train behind him. As the light got bigger, he could almost hear the wheels of the freight chugging towards him louder and louder. Um, chugga, 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 chugga. Um, Joe grabbed his lantern and started waving it frankly from side to side, hollering, Hey, stop. Hey. He knew the freight engineer couldn't hear him, but he screamed anyway, waving his lantern wilder and wilder. The freight light grew bigger and bigger, and Joe heard the whooshing sounds of the air brakes, then the sound of the freight locomotive going into reverse, its wheels spinning onto the tracks. He saw the sparks flying off either side of the track like some spurl fireworks display. Um, that was the last thing Joe Baldwin ever saw, for the freight smashed into his caboose with a deafening crash, splintering it into a million pieces. Then, there was silence on the tracks, save for the steam hissing from the freight train. The only light was from Joe Baldwin's lantern, which had been thrown deep into the dark swamp and continued to burn through the night. The next morning, the people that came to search the wreckage finally Joe's mangled body near the caboose. To their horror, they found that he had been decapitated in the crash. They searched throughout the woods, but never could find his head, only his lantern, still warm to the touch. They carried Joe home and buried him without his head. Um, a few weeks later, the station master at Mako stepped out onto the platform on another dark and foggy night. As he looked down the tracks, he thought he saw a little pinpoint of light coming towards him. He checked his watch. There wasn't supposed to be, to be any trains arriving then. The light kept moving down the tracks as if it was were someone carrying a lantern. Then it started to swing back and forth slowly at first, but as it got closer to the station, it started to swing wilder and wilder. <clears throat> um, and then it suddenly turned and went back down the tracks until it disappeared into the darkness. The station master didn't know what to make of it at first and eventually dismissed it from his mind. Um, but then the light started coming back more and more, mainly on nights when there was were stormy weather. Again, it would start as a tiny point, growing larger as it approached, um, swinging back and forth like a lantern, wilder and wilder. Then as it neared the station, it would turn around and go back into the woods. Um, the station master wasn't the only one who saw the light. Engineers approaching Matco would see it along the tracks and would stop their trains thinking it was a signal. They finally had to make a special rule on Mako where any signals to any train had to be done with two lights instead of one, and any signal, light signals were to be ignored. Folks began coming into Mako from all over to see what became known as the Mako light. Scientists even tried studying it to come up with a possible theory, but never could figure it out. Um, some folks said it was a ball of lightning or a swamp gas. In later years, some believed it was an automobile headlights reflecting off the tracks. But all the locals knew what it was. Knew what it was. They knew it was Joe Baldwin coming back to look for his head. 
1977, the railroad shut down the line and tore up the tracks. When the tracks left, so did the light, and it hadn't reappeared since. Whether Joe Baldwin found his head or found some other measures of peace, that was the last anyone ever heard, ever saw, not heard, of the Mackle Light. Um, the end. So there's a nice little haunting, spooky tale to end end the podcast. Um, folks, this is co-host Firefighter Tiger with co-host Medic Dog wishing you all a good, happy Halloween and to look forward to a special Halloween tale bound episode coming out to you this week. So, folks... Happy Halloween from Firefighter Tiger. And happy Halloween from Medic Dog. You all have a good one and we wish you all a nice spooky Halloween. (laughs) 